everybody. Welcome to the big raised bed garden. That's what we call this particular garden bed on our property. It is 10 feet wide and 24 feet long. So this side right here, I'm using this year. I've already got, as you can see right here, some stuff planted in the big plant right there. That's artichokes. So over here, there's various lettuces, beets, radishes, and other greens, and then the big artichoke. Of course, I have my nemesis, the bindweed. And then this cluster is actually primarily all sunflowers. Um, a majority of these are going to come out. However, I'm going to leave many of them in place to use them to my advantage. This side is being used this year by a scout, one of our local Boy Scouts. He's going to be uh, planting in here. These flowers, of all things, were actually planted by another Boy Scout. Uh, gosh, I think it's maybe it's been three summers ago now. Two for sure, but I think I want to say three. And they were maybe 10 inches wide at the end of that year and eight inches tall. Like, they were not big. And I thought, well, you know, they keep coming up every year. I just leave them there. And they, like, last year they got maybe 16 inches tall at the most. And they're like a foot wide. I was like, okay, so whatever this is, it's, you know, it's going to stay small. Well, <laughs> it's not so small. And there's also a, lar a bunch of uh, hollyhocks in here that have volunteered. Like, there's one and some along the edges. And of all things, there's some peas in here that are volunteering this year already. Uh, so, because these are flowering, I'm not going to remove them. But I am going to get a stake and kind of stake these up so that they're not sprawling everywhere. That way the scout still has the ability to use this garden to the best of his means. And then I have a plant. See this plant right here? This, okay, it looks like a weed, but that's actually beneficial. So I've got to figure out a game plan so that I can keep that beneficial plant. So I'll be talking to the scout about a game plan for that. But I'm excited to see what this scout is going to do with the garden this year. It's always exciting. I am going to do some weeding in there today. Rearranging, fixing it up, making it look a little bit nicer. Because, well, I want to give a product that this scout has the ability to use that isn't, well, a, a disaster. I don't, I'm not expecting some kid to show up here and have to bust their tail for an entire day because I gave them some nasty garden plot. It's just overrun right now because there's just been nothing going on. We've had so much frost and stuff, so we just hadn't been using it. I'll get that cleaned up. So my energy today, my big project, among everything, is to get this bed right here fully weeded, make a game plan with these sunflowers here, thin them out, use the rest to my advantage, and then clean up that side for that scout. Oh! And duh, if I'm going to be cleaning it up, I'm going to be planting. That's the plan, at least. Get some stuff planted in here. Sometimes you find some really interesting things when you're weeding the garden. This is going to make an excellent chicken treat. Hi, guys. Oops. Oh, she got it. <laughs> Run! Run with her prize. Well, what a difference some hard work, some sweat, and time will make. The lettuce, beets, and radishes are still here. This is cleared. There's little bits of green you see, some weeds. I left this patch of sunflowers, and this one I'm going to... What I'll do is I will let them get a bit taller here about another week, and then I'm going to plant a bunch of uh, beans at the bottom of them and let the beans climb them and I'll do the same thing with this group here I'll let the beans so I don't have to go build a trellis I can just let that be a natural trellis I've got some country gentleman sweet corn it's an heirloom variety I'm gonna put a row of that in here and then I've got some okra that I want to bring up here so what I might do even let me think this is a big spot like this 
I need to use this. It doesn't look wide probably on camera, but it's about three feet wide, two and a half, three feet wide. So it's more than enough room to use for planting. I only need about 12 inches to walk through. So what I'm considering is tucking the sweet corn maybe here and then do the okra here because I can reach through the corn or the okra and get to the beans. It's not really that hard. And then I've got, so I brought some things up here. Let's see. Remembering to stay hydrated. It was 80 some degrees today. Anyway, so this is my country gentleman sweet corn. This is the okra I brought up here. I'm not sure if this is a weed or something I want to keep. So at the moment it's allowed to stay. We'll see what happens. Anyway, these are some tomatoes I've started. This is a, oh wait, no, okay. So two eggplants, these are eggplants. This is a tomato, this is a tomato. One's a mini bell tomato, the other one's a micro tom tomato. Those are little ones. They don't get very big at all, so I don't have to worry about staking them, any of that fun stuff. They're literally just gonna be a little bush. So I can put them in the corner, like one right here in this corner and somewhere else. Um, I didn't bring them up yet, but I've got, let's see, I think I've got two of the Peter peppers to bring up here, because I like to put the peppers up here. Uh, Carolina Reaper, I think, was two of those, and then I, some other terribly hot pepper. Henry loves buying the hot, hot peppers, so we've got a few of them. And I'll put them up here in this garden for growth. And then I'm hoping I've got enough room in here to put at least one row of jalapeno peppers. So it, it's gonna be interesting to see just how much I can kind of cram in here, but have healthy plants. Like you wanna get your plants close, but you still want them to have enough room to breathe. Before I plant my tomatoes, I take some eggshells that I've got that are crushed up, and I put them in the bottom of the hole. Tomatoes need a lot of calcium for good growth. And I'll tell you what, you put some eggshell on the bottom like that, your tomatoes are going to go crazy. The next thing I do around not just my tomatoes, but in my garden, this is Epsom salt. See how small a handful that really is? It's not much. And like this around every single plant that I'm planting. And then I'm going to water it in. It does wonders to protect your plants from those roly-poly pill bugs, slugs, um, earwigs, and, and other bugs that are going to be in the soil that want to eat your crops. Something else I'm doing as I plant is making sure to record in my homestead journal what I'm planting and where I'm planting. So this is a map of this side of my raised, gar uh, raised bed garden for 2020. This is the west side of that garden. And I'm just making sure to record everything I'm growing. What else I'm doing is I double check my companion planting guide to make sure I'm not putting anything too close to something else that it really doesn't like. So the next thing I'm planting is corn right here. And as you can see, celery and tomatoes are in the red column, which is fine because I'm gonna be putting it over on that far, you can't really, the artichoke's in the way, but it's gonna go over there. So that works for corn. What about, let's see if okra is on here. It is, it's up here. It doesn't say anything about keeping it away from anything, so that's gonna be fine, because I'm gonna put it kinda next to my corn. Now, let's see, P uh, eggplant. Again, there's nothing there in the red column for eggplant. And now, let's see, I want peppers, but I think I need hot peppers. Here we go, because these are hot. Keep away from beans, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, and fennel. Well, I don't have any of those in this garden. I will have some beans, so what I will do is I'll put the hot peppers right over here with the eggplants in between them, because the beans will be over there. So see, just having a guide like this is going to make my life a little bit easier, and I won't end up with unhappy plants. Now, I do have lettuce in here, just double check. There's nothing really there that lettuce doesn't like other than cabbage, which I don't need to worry about because it's over in the other garden. Say, same with beets. See, beets don't like pole beans, which that's fine. The beans are going to be on the other side of this garden. And let's see, radishes. I've got some radishes in here. 
cabbage, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, and turnips. Again, I don't have them in here, so I am good to plant. That white that you see there on the ground, that's Epsom salt. The one on the right is where I've planted some corn. On the left is where I've got okra planted. Now over here, see I've got a good, see these sticks? This is how I mark my plants when they're young so that nobody will step on them, hopefully. I've got a good space here, so what I'm gonna do is come off of these sunflowers and come this way and put some more okra, which works out because we love okra, but that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead, make use of that space, plant more okra right there. What you see here, these are, there's two Carolina Reapers, one red, one yellow, a ghost pepper, and then two Peter peppers. These ones, there's four mucho nacho jalapeno peppers, and then, let's see, mini bell, there's two mini bell tomatoes, and then two uh, black beauty eggplants, then of course the lettuce. Back in that corner, there's two micro tom tomatoes, and the artichoke. So once the corn emerges, yeah, I'm going to wait for the corn. So I was going to wait a week and plant beans on the sunflower bottoms, but what I might wait, well, no, I really, so I'm trying to think, you know, how do I get the most out of my uh, planting time? So what I'll do is I will probably in a week plant some pea, uh, beans around the base of some of these sunflowers. And then once the uh, cucumber, or no, the cucumbers, oh my goodness. Once the corn and okra come up and they're about eight inches tall minimum, I'll plant some beans at the bottom of them that will climb up. So it's similar to the three sisters method. You don't have to have corn, beans, and squash to do the three sisters. You, you, there's, you know, get creative. What else can you do it with? Well, sunflowers are tall. You know, let things climb that. I've even let peas climb them. Um, cucumbers or, you know, the tiny cucumbers. Stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and get one more row of okra planted. And I'm going to get some Epsom salt around these baby plants I just put in to discourage bugs from trying to eat these young babies.